Okay, here I'm going to graph two periods of the function y equals 2 times cosine of x plus pi over 3 minus 1. The first thing I'm going to think of is how does this graph, what is this, if I, if I were to think about the graph of cosine x, how does that, how, do, how does, you know, the 2 out front, the plus pi over 3 and the minus 1, how does that change that? Well, the amplitude for this new function will be the absolute value of 2, which is 2. The period, if I look at the value in front of the parentheses, you can imagine there's an invisible 1 in there. That's our b value in the formula 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. So we'll have 2 pi over 1 or 2 pi. So the, the period hasn't changed. To get my increments, um, I divide that by 4, which will give me pi over 2. So those are going to be my increments on the x-axis. Okay. 2 pi is definitely the period, though. Let's see, in terms of a phase shift or a horizontal shift, it's been shifted to the left, to the left pi over 3 units. Right, I see a positive, but it moves it to the left. And then the negative 1 out there, uh, it takes the graph of cosine and it shifts it down, down one unit. So, okay, so I don't know if it's easier to do this one in a couple steps or tr to try to do it in one fell swoop. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to graph y equals 2 times cosine of x plus pi over 3. I'm going to graph that one first. And then I'm just going to move everything down one unit and we'll be in business. Because otherwise, I think it may get a little... A little nasty. Okay. So at cosine of 0, you're normally at positive 1. Um, in this case, though, again, it's been shifted to the left pi over 3 units. So I'm going to make that negative pi over 3. If you substitute in negative pi over 3, we'll get cosine of 0, which will be 1. And then we'll have to multiply that by positive 2. So at negative pi over 3, we're up here at positive 2. This is where I like to use my increments now. So I'm going to move over pi over 2 units. So I'm going to move now pi over 2 units. But since I, my first point my, that I've used has a denominator of 3, um, this can be, again, a little, a little just tedious in terms of the arithmetic. So what I'm going to do is, I'm at negative pi over 3 originally. I want to move pi over 2 units to the right. That'll give me my next coordinate. Well, we've got to get common denominators. So if we get common denominators, uh, we'll have negative 2 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6. That's going to give us pi over 6. So my next, uh, my next point is going to be here at pi over 6. So there's pi over 6. And again, now to get to the next increment, I would want to take pi over 6 and move over pi over 2 units. Well, moving over pi over 2 units is the same thing as moving over 3 pi over 6 units. So that'll give us 4 pi over 6. So that's going to be my next uh, my next uh, increment. So let me see if I can keep this to scale somehow here. Uh, somehow, um, I'm just going to start making this. Uh, we'll make that four pi over six. So I'm going to go over. I'm going to try to keep it regular here. Again, these graphs can be a little unwieldy doing them by hand. So certainly label things. So let's see. That's pi over six. This would be four pi over six if we move over another three pi over 6 will be at 7 pi over 6 and then we've got 10 pi over 6 we would have 13 pi over 6 16 pi over 6 19 pi over 6 let's see how how good of a graph that gives us so far all right so i've got my units in there once i have that i feel pretty happy Okay, so we start off at 2. At the next increment, I'm going to be down here at 0. 
And then at 4 pi over 6, let's see, make sure this is looks okay. At 4 pi over 6, I'm now going to be down here at negative 2. At 7 pi over 6, I'm going to be back at 0. At 10 pi over 6, I'm going to be at positive 2. At 13 pi over 6, I'm going to be back at 0. At 16 pi over 6, I'm going to be down here at negative 2. At 19 pi over 6, I'm going to be back at 0. So let's see, there's uh, one period we need to go over one more time. So if we add, that'll be 22 pi over 6. I'm now going to be up here at positive 2. Yuck. So again, to me, it's just, just the arithmetic makes this a headache more than anything. Okay, so again, what did I do? I figured out, you know, a starting point. Negative pi over 3, I'm at 2. I figured out the period was 2 pi. I divide that by 4. That gives me pi over 2. That tells me how far I'm going to move over. Again, that tells me how I'm going to label things on the x-axis. So at negative pi over 3, I moved over pi over 2 units, or equivalently, I moved over 3 pi over 6 units. And again, then I just start moving over 3 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, etc., etc., etc. So I'm just changing the numerator in my fraction. But again, this is actually, hey, not the graph we want. This is 2 times cosine of x plus pi over 3. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this graph and just shift it down one unit and try to make this look not terrible. So if we move everything down one unit, instead of going from negative 2 to positive 2, again, now I'm going to go up to a height of positive 1 but it'll bottom out at negative 3. So let me give myself a little more room there. So da 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 da, there's negative 3. All right, so at negative pi over 3, let me put my increments in there first. Negative pi over 3, and then we went over and said that was pi over 6. And then 4 pi over 6 and then 7 pi over 6. I'm keeping all that stuff exactly the same. 10 pi over 6. Um, 13 pi over 6. Then we've got 16 pi over 6. We have 19 pi over 6. And then we have 22 pi over 6. So everything is just getting shifted down one unit. So instead of being at positive 2, it's now at positive 1. Instead of going through pi over 6, comma, 0, it's now going to go through uh, pi over 6, comma, negative 1. And then at 4 pi over 6, instead of bottoming out at negative 2, it's going to bottom out at negative 3. So, oh boy, I hope this uh, graph is, is, is not too terrible. And again, then at 7 pi over 6, I'm going to be back at the middle, which is negative 1. At 10 pi over 6, instead of being up at positive 2, I'm now at positive 1. So everything's going to get covered up here. Sorry about that. Um, at 13 pi over 6, we're going to be back at negative 1. At 16 pi over 6, we're going to be down here at negative 3. Then back up, and lastly, at 22 pi over 6, that's my last point here. Instead of being at positive 2, we'll be at positive 1. And there is a nice little rough sketch. So, again, to me, um, the, the worst part is just getting things situated correctly on the x-axis. So, and it, all that really is is just a matter of getting common denominators, you know, getting the correct increment and then getting common denominators. And again, I like that because it goes from the maximum value to the middle value to the, the least value, and it just keeps uh, oscillating back and forth amongst those.